हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो फ्रेंड्स आई होप लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स वेर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ चेक्स एंड टाइप्स ऑफ एंडोर्समेंट्स वर क्लियर टू यू एंड यू आर नाउ क्लियर विद डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ए चेक नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम टेकिंग अ केस स्टडी वेर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ पेमेंट ऑफ ए चेक विद रिस्पेक्ट टू नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एक्ट एटीन एटी वन बट बिफोर दैट डोंट फॉर गेट टू लाइक दिस वीडियो सिंस दिस टेल्स मी डेट यू आर लविंग द कंटेंट एंड मोटिवेट्स मी टू मेक मोर सच ऑसम वीडियोज Also subscribe to this channel since this is the only channel that provides quality content. Lastly, don't forget to join my Facebook and Telegram groups where I post lots of one pagers and other useful stuff which is very important for your examination. All the links to join are there in description to this video so do join after you finish this lecture. So without further delay let's start with today's case study. A check is drawn upon Bank of Baroda. It is stolen by Ramesh who hands it over to Kanak who takes it in good faith for valuable consideration. Then Kanak deposits the check into her own account in Canara Bank who presents it and obtain payment from Bank of Baroda. Discuss the legal position of paying banker, collecting banker, Kanak and true owner of the check in each of the following cases. Now the first case is if the check is payable to bearer. Friends I hope by now you are clear with what a bearer check is. If not then please watch my previous two videos again. In simple words a check which is payable to any person who presents it for payment at the bank counter is called bearer check. So in this case the drawee that is paying banker is discharged that is not liable to true owner of the check since the payment is made in due course by him as per section 85 oblique 2 of negotiable instruments act. And so bank of baroda is not liable for payment made by it. Friends section 85 oblique 2 of negotiable instruments act clearly states that where a check is originally expressed to be payable to bearer the drawee is discharged by payment in due course to the bearer thereof notwithstanding any endorsement whether in full or in blank appearing thereon and notwithstanding any such endorsement purports to restrict or exclude further negotiation then next the collecting banker also does not incur any liability to the true owner as per section 131 Friends section 131 of negotiable instruments act deals with non liability of banker receiving the payment of the check and this section clearly states that a banker who has in good faith and without negligence received payment for a customer of a check cross generally or specially to himself shall not in case the title of the check proves defective incur any liability to the true owner of the check by reason only of having received such payment then next let's see the legal position of kanak Friends Kanak who takes a check from Ramesh in good faith for valuable consideration is therefore not liable to the true owner of the check. Lastly let's see legal position of true owner of the check. Now friends here since Ramesh has stolen the check so the true owner of the check can recover the amount from Ramesh only but not from Kanak. So friends I hope this first part of the case study along with explanations is clear to you. But before moving to the second part of this case study don't forget to get your GIB resources from the links given in description to this video These five are power packed GIB books which have been designed for your best results in upcoming GIB examinations These first three are 1000 series question banks of principles legal and accounting paper of GIB Friends most of one student face difficulty in accounting paper and that's why I have provided thorough explanation wherever needed in this book so that you won't face any issue while solving case study and questions of this book then this next book is secret sauce book which is in fact summarized notes of all the three papers all in one compact book and this last one is case study book for your principles and legal papers now this also comes with detailed explanations friends i update these books after every exam so always get updated books for your best results all the links are there in description to this video so don't forget to get these after you finish this lecture Next let's move forward with our lecture. Then next part is again here also tell the legal position of all four if the check is payable to bearer and is crossed generally. So friends the only difference here with respect to previous part was that in this case the check is crossed generally. Now I hope you all remember what a general crossing is. So in short in the case of general crossing of a check the paying banker will pay money to any banker. Thus in this case the holder of the check or payee will receive the payment only through a bank account and not over the counter. So friends in this case also the paying banker that is Bank of Baroda is not liable to the true owner since payment was made in due course as per section 852 of Negotiable Instruments Act. So the reasoning here is same as that of previous part. 
Similarly, the collecting banker is also not liable to the true owner as per section 131 of Negotiable Instruments Act, which was discussed in previous part. Similarly, Kanak who takes a check from Ramesh in good faith for valuable consideration is thus not liable to the true owner of the check. And lastly, legal position of true owner of the check will be that he can recover the amount only from Ramesh who stole the check. The next part is, what if the check is payable to bearer and is crossed generally with the words not negotiable? Now friends, this part is really interesting and conceptual. If you don't understand the meaning of not negotiable here, then you can't answer this part correctly. So you already know what a bearer check is and what a journal crossing is. Now not negotiable word is very important here as it restricts the negotiability and thus in the case of transfer, the transferee will not give a better title than that of the transferer. Or in other words, the not negotiable crossing is simply a warning to the transferee of a check that is he will not get a better title than the transferer had. So the transferee before accepting any such check should examine the title of the transferer and accept only if the title of the transfer is good. So in this case, the paying banker that is Bank of Baroda as before is not liable to the true owner of the check as per section 85 oblique 2 of Negotiable Instruments Act. Similarly, the collecting banker that is Canra Bank is also not liable to the true owner as per section 131 of Negotiable Instruments Act. But when it comes to Kanak, she is liable to the true owner since the check is not negotiable and she got a defective title because check was stolen by Ramesh. Lastly, the legal position of the true owner of the check will be that he can recover the amount from both Ramesh and Kanak. Friends, I hope this part of the case study is clear to you. The next part is, what if the check is payable to bearer and is crossed specially with the words Canra Bank? Now friends, this also is a good question. I hope you all know what a special crossing is. So in the case of special crossing, the check bears the name of bank either with or without the words not negotiable. Now this means that the payment can be made only to that specific bank. So a special crossing checks look somewhat like this. That is the collecting banker in this case must be Canra Bank. So let's see the legal position for all the four cases. Now as with the previous parts, here also the paying banker is not liable to the true owner due to protection under section 85 oblique 2 of Negotiable Instruments Act. Similarly, collecting banker is also not liable under section 131 of Negotiable Instruments Act. Next friends here, crossing is special and payment can be collected only by Canra Bank. Now as given in case study, Kanak also had her account with Canra Bank and so Kanak collected the payment as per special crossing mentioned in good faith. So she is not liable to the true owner of the check. Lastly, legal position of the true owner will be that he can recover the amount only from Ramesh. The next part of the case study is, what if the check is payable to bearer and is crossed specially with the words Kerala Grameen Bank? Now friends, this case is really interesting. So let's start discussing the legal position for all the four cases. Now please note as discussed earlier that in special crossing, the check bears across its face an addition of the banker's name. And that can be with or without the words not negotiable. So in this case, a paying banker will pay the amount of the check only to the banker whose name appears in the crossing. Now in our case, special crossing contains the word Kerala Grameen Bank. But in case study, you have Bank of Baroda, which was our, which is the paying banker and it honored the check presented by Canra Bank, which is not in due course as per section 125 of Negotiable Instruments Act. Friends, section 129 of Negotiable Instruments Act is related to payment of cross check out of due course. And it states that any banker paying a check cross generally otherwise than to the banker or a check cross specially otherwise than to the banker to whom the same is crossed or his agent for collection being a banker shall be liable to the true owner of the check for any loss he may sustain owing to the check having been so paid. So as it is clear by now, paying banker that is Bank of Baroda is liable to the true owner. How can Bank of Baroda pay to Canara Bank when the special crossing clearly says Kerala Grameen Bank? Next collecting banker that is Canara Bank in our case study is also liable to the true owner as per section 131. Since crossing was special favoring Kerala Grameen Bank and not Canara Bank. The payment collected by Canara Bank was not in due course. Then Kanak is not liable to the true owner of the check since she collected the check in good faith. Lastly, legal position of true owner of the check will be that he can recover the amount from paying banker that is Bank of Broda, the collecting banker that is Canara Bank and Ramesh. 
Then next part of the case study is what if the check is payable to Kanak or order and Ramesh for this Kanak's endorsement? Friends, I hope this statement is very clear to you. Please reread the statement to understand what is actually happening here. So in this case, the check was payable to Kanak or order. Now Ramesh who stole the check goes to bank, endorses the check as Miss Kanak and gets the payment. So friends, in this case, the paying banker is discharged by payment in due course. But please note, Kanak being the payee need not be the customer of the paying banker that is Bank of Baroda. So Bank of Baroda can't make out Kanak's real signatures. The paying banker that is Bank of Baroda therefore is not expected to know Kanak's signature. Friends, Section 85 or Negotiable Instruments Act therefore grants protection to paying banker in case of forged endorsements. The section provides that if a check payable to order purports to be endorsed by or on behalf of the payee and the banker on whom it is drawn pays it in due course, the banker is in fact discharged even though the endorsement of the payee might turn out to be forgery. However, to claim protection, the banker has to prove that the payment was made in due course. So, Bank of Baroda in this case is not liable to the true owner of the check. Next, the collecting banker does not incur any liability in this case. Then Kanak is also not liable to the true owner of the check since her endorsements were forged. Lastly, the true owner of the check can recover the payment from Ramesh only. Friends, finally, let's see the final part of this case study. Now, again answer, what if the drawer's signature were forged? Now, friends, what if drawer, that is the person who made the check itself, were forged? Now, friends, what if the signature of the drawer, that is the person who made the check, that is the person who made the check itself, were forged? So in this scenario, paying banker that is Bank of Baroda is liable to true owner because the payment is not in due course as the signature of the drawer are forged. Similarly, collecting banker is also liable when signature are forged as per section 131 of Negotiable Instruments Act. Then Kanak is also liable to the true owner since forgery passes no title at all. And then legal position of true owner will be that he can recover the amount from Bank of Baroda that is paying banker Canara Bank that is collecting banker and Kanak. So friends, as you can see, when signature of the drawer are forged, it really has severe consequences. So friends, with this, I hope this important case study is clear to you. I have tried to cover different aspects with respect to paying banker and collecting banker and you have seen what happens in different cases with respect to check transfer. So with this, I have wind up this lecture and don't forget to get your GIB resources from the links given in description to this lecture. So thank you and I will meet you again in another lecture.